There are some other programs out there that we talked about just a few minutes uh, in, in the introduction. Some of those are called process verified. And so this goes a little step further than just certified. This has with it some teeth that allow USDA to actually do some things uh, in terms of auditing. And so if you look at certified or process verified products, uh, their suppliers are, are able to make marketing claims such as breed, feeding practices, or other raising and processing claims and market them themselves as U.S. process verified. To do that, though, you're going to see that there's a lot of documentation involved in this. It's not as, as stringent as organic, but on the other hand, there's a tremendous amount of documentation that has to uh, be uh, uh, requirement or the requirements for documentation are there. They have to have an approved suppliers listing for everything they use from feed to uh, any of the fertilizers and those kind of things as they go through and they're audited. So USDA audits all of their documentation, make sure that they're uh, maintaining those process verified uh, claims as they go through uh, the program so it's more stringent than just seeing what they look like in the plant as they go through that product, or as they go through. Uh, some of the claims are, have to do with that, that uh, and I'm, I'm sure you've already heard this term, but never ever three. No antibiotics ever, no growth promotants ever. They're not fed any mammalian byproducts as they go through the plant. That's a big part of process verified programs. And so, They've done that. The other one that's process verified for a different reason are the Red Angus cattle. If you think about Red Angus, you know, they don't really qualify for Angus based on their coat color. So how would they qualify for some of those programs? Only by some kind of process verified program that would allow them to do some of that as they go through. Some other, and uh, say slim down version of a process verified program is called a QSA, your quality system assessment. There's some of those out there on the market that are especially uh, being used for some of the product that's going into Europe. And one of those is non-hormone treated cattle. I've already uh, identified that as we went through uh, some of the uh, certification programs but also pork for the European Union and export verification programs to facilitate trade between uh, pro with product requirements that are a little different going into each country. Again, so that they're documented, they have, they have records that help identify that that program meets those requirements and it's auditable. And that's really what a lot of these programs have uh, come down to uh, that are still certified, but they're not just those certified beef programs. I said not all beef carcasses qualify for those as well, and we talked a little bit about some of those in terms of standard grades or no-roll cattle that don't meet any of the qualifications for grading, uh, yield grades that are really high or, or have a really fat cattle, uh, maybe those that have either really low uh, carcass weights are really high carcass weights. Some of those that are older, a lot of times we refer to those as hard bones and they don't really fit in terms of uh, the uh, quality of the lean or they're more variable in the quality of the lean. Uh, muscle hemorrhaging or blood splash and we've got an example of some of that but some of those that uh, have all those little pinpricks of blood in the surface uh, because of maybe high blood pressure quite right uh, before harvest. Dark cutters, those that have really, really dark color, don't meet those as well. One of the, as we said, there's some things that disqualify some of the, uh, some of the uh, cattle from being available for these programs. One of them, like certified Angus beef and several of the others, say practically free of any kind of hemorrhagic or hemorrhaging in the ribeye. This one has just a very, very slight amount of that. It's the only one we've got to show you today. But if you notice, these little pricks of blood that are showing up in the ribeye. If that was more pronounced, most of the time they say practically free of that. So maybe one or two of these would be okay. 
this one would probably have enough that a grader would say it does not qualify for a premium program that has this as a requirement for uh, removing those from the program. Well, I said that these were the ones, and everything we've talked, to so, talked about so far are third party certified by USDA. That's a really important portion of this, is that they're third party certified. So a USDA grader comes in, the plant cannot tell him which ones, him or her, which ones to identify. All the plant can say is, please identify the ones that meet these specifications. And so their third party, there's a third party involved, USDA. But there's a number of different programs out there that have nothing to do with USDA. And there are alliances or specification beef programs or cooperatives. And so I just want you to be sure that you kind of understand that those are not certified by USDA. They don't have that third party certification. There's nothing wrong with the programs. It's just that you have to have an agreement between the packer and whoever's raising the cattle and whoever's buying them on the other end. It's got to be a contractual agreement of some kind and you gotta have some faith that what they're saying is correct as they go through. So there are a lot of these alliances or specification programs out there. Uh, I always kind of, uh, to kind of think about them and, and Dr. Gary Smith who said this at uh, a meeting that I was at a number of years ago, it's like story beef, something that I think is important and I'll pay a premium for. Okay, and so there's a lot of those out there. Here's one, Country Natural Beef, and I just took this off the internet and you can read all of the specifications there, but there's a whole list of things that make you really feel good about what you're producing or what you're buying and that you feel good that that's a local group that you're buying from and they have all these specifications. Rancher's Renaissance was another one I mentioned at the very first. It's kind of interesting. You may have said, thought you had bought some Rancher's Renaissance beef and you haven't because they are a program that's set up between uh, the uh, producers and the retailers on the other end to define some of these cattle into a certain group. And so they do, they use source verification process, genetic verification. They go through and they look at all these value-based systems. And they say, here are some of our specs. We prefer a minimum of 50% English in the cattle and a maximum of 50% continental. We actually act, uh, they want those cattle preconditioned where they have at least 45 days in the if you've ever heard of the VAC 45 program or if it's mentioned in class, that's one of the programs that they use a lot. Record management, that we know where the injection sites are given or the injections are given, no ruminant proteins, all those kind of things. And then Ranchers Renaissance would sell that product to somebody like Harris Teeter Ranch, who would be a retailer who would use that product in their retail cases to define what they're doing. Rancher's Reserve is another one like that. We saw this out in some stores in San Francisco a number of years ago. And they have some different claims that they use, but they're buying that product from someone else that is using those specifications to do that. We do feel like that this is one of the ways that ranchers actually can uh, profit more than just producing cattle that they take down to the local auction barn and sell because there are some premiums that are given back to these producers and there's a number of different sources that you can look online to look at these alliances and what they really uh, bring to the table. Some of the premium programs range from about 10 to $60 a head. This is, this is an old slide but I think uh, it's still very uh, useful in understanding that all of these programs really benefit producers as well because even if you go to the local auction barn and you see what kind of cattle are being produced, you also can identify that some of those black cattle, because there's so many of these programs out there, bring a little, a little more per pound than some of the other cattle that are out there as well. So there are some benefits to uh, back to producers for this whole system of what we've created here 
in branding beef products as they go through the market. If you're looking for more information on this, I would suggest especially going to certified beef programs under USDA, uh, www.ams.usda.gov, because it'll give you uh, that whole list uh, in a PDF form of where uh, you can find a lot of those programs out there. There's also a really good definition of process verified under USDA's uh, website as well. Those would help you identify more and more about what these programs are, how they're to be used, uh, but you know this is a really uh, one of those real confusing parts of this industry that's a changing model that changes every day, but I think uh, in today's climate with today's consumers, you're going to see more and more products sold with some brand name other than just beef associated with it.